It's impressive the evolution horror has gone through on the internet. It seems every decade, the format changes into something else. In the 2000s, the big thing was screamers. You're just watching a normal vi- BOO! Gotcha! <laughs> These were all over the place in the 2000s, and while I have some nostalgia for them, I will fully admit they were extremely cheap and preyed on the weak and vulnerable. The reactions were fantastic, though. Right now, the big horror trend as I speak is analog horror and NRGs. Oh, everybody knows about these. Just slap a VHS filter on something and make some spooky cryptic stuff, the public will eat it up. Now, I'm poking fun in jest. A lot of these are really well made and a lot better than some I could probably make. I can't deny the creativity some of these have in them. That's the current trend right now. Who knows what it'll be in a few years. But the one I want to talk about was the horror trend of the 2010s. God, 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 just just saying that, the 2010s, they're in the past now. God, I'm getting old. But before I have an existential crisis, I want to talk about creepypastas. In the 2010s, these were the big boys of horror. If you were interested in horror around that time on the web, you couldn't not know about them. They were everywhere. Entire YouTube channels with millions of subs doing ratings of them. Thousands of stories made by thousands of would-be horror writers. But because they were written by tons of different people, tons of different people had different ideas of what they found scary, and such, they vary in quality. Some creepypastas are just better than others. A few months ago, I was driving along the streets of Los Angeles with my friend Zach, until we realized that we were running out of gas. We were trying to park our car somewhere to give our car a rest, but no luck. Then something caught our eyes. It was McDonald's building with Ron McDonald at the top of it. When we parked by the parking lot, we noticed that there was no customers inside. It was weird, considering that McDonald's is open 24-7. Also, there were no cars either. I could have sworn that the Ron McDonald statue turned his head against so me. So we opened the door inside. What we saw was so horrible. There were dead corpses all over the tables and chairs, and lots of blood on the soda machine. We puked in the trash can that was next to us. This time, they had no eyeballs. Judd's blood coming from the sockets. Their stomachs had been ripped open with the organs ripped out. I tried ignoring them, but they still bother me. I didn't even have time to eat fries. So you're the man that rules the world. They call me the Shockmaster. You've ruled the world long enough, Sid Vicious. Get ready. Come on, you want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? Come and get me. What was behind that door? How do they all went missing? I hope someone with this mystery anytime soon. And who is that strange figure? I don't know about the rest of you, but I just pissed myself and shut out my masculinity. I'm still single, ladies. Personally for me, my favorite creepypasta will always be the Godzilla NES one. Not only because it's written well, but because the images alongside it add to the story. Although I will say, the ending is fucking horrible, and anyone else who's read it knows exactly what I'm talking about. Go read it for yourself. But like I said, creepypastas were big in the 2010s. It ain't the 2010s anymore, and as such, the popularity of creepypastas has died out. There is still a dedicated following and people who are still well into creepypastas, but I think it's safe to say the days of these getting tons of views and recognition are long gone. The vast majority of the internet no longer cares about Slenderman, The Rake, Ben Drowned, or any of the other dozens of creepypasta icons anymore. All the creepypasta icons you know and love have been taken out back with a 12 gauge because they've now fallen into irrelevancy. However, there are two exceptions to this. These two exceptions are still relevant to this day, which is surprising. The first exception being Jeff the Killer. Now, Jeff is only relevant for one reason. You see this incredibly unsettling image of him? This is like, this image is like the face of creepypastas at this point. For those not in the know, there is an ongoing manhunt to find out where this image came from. There are subreddits and whole communities out there looking to find the origin of where this image surfaced because nobody knows. But you see, that's all people care about. Finding the origin of the image. People could give two less of a fucks about the story and if people ever do find the source of the image, 
then everyone is probably going to be satisfied with the results, and then Jeff is going to join the ranks of his creepypasta brothers and sisters, and no one will ever care about him ever again. So that's exception one. Exception two is far more baffling because it's still quite popular and has tons of content produced for it to this day. And the original story it was based on was complete dog shit, so that makes it even more intriguing. Well, what creepypasta is it you may ask? For some strange reason, God only knows, Sonic.exe, out of all creepypastas, has given the shotgun of irrelevancy the slip. It has beaten all the odds, and to this day, is still given tons of content and support, despite the original story itself being absolutely horrible. I mean, how many of you have actually gone back and read the original story? It's horrible. It's filled with cliches, errors, and extremely dumb protagonists, and is really specific about details that no one cares about. Like, it tells us how many seconds the game would stay on or cut to something. Like, why is that important? Was the protagonist counting the entire time? He is also able to give excruciating details on things that apparently only stayed on screen for a second. That doesn't make any sense. I will give it credit for one thing, though. The fan game that got created because of it. The game itself is not very good either, it's basically a walking sim. But the one thing I note about it is the infamous I am God image. I don't know who drew this, but I have to give them a round of applause. If their intent was to make an extremely unnerving, off-putting looking close-up of Sonic, they fucking nailed it. I am 24 years old, and this image still rubs me the wrong way just looking at it. I don't know if it's the deadpan stare right into your soul or the creepy shit-eating grin, but this image still puts me off enough to not edit this video at night. Like legit, if that thing stared at me while I was asleep, I would probably piss myself. They've attempted to replace it with a more stylized and updated version, but it just doesn't have the same impact for me. This one is far, far more off-putting. And that really is a shit-eating grin. Like, like, like literally, it looks like he's been eating shit. His breath is probably horrible. You know how people talk about horror monsters that disturb them, like how they look, how they sound, but no one ever asks how about what would they smell like. You think Jason Voorhees smells like swamp ass? You think Freddy Krueger has cologne on? Or does he smell like burnt roast? I don't know, I'm just rambling. But I gotta say, that's probably the most horrifying thing about this entire fan game. Not him murdering his friends, but the fact his breath was probably fucking horrible when he got robbed in their faces to do it. Yeah, I could go on and on, but the fact of the matter is, the original story is just not good. In fact, the original wiki it was posted on agrees with me, because at some point, they decide to exodus the story to the Trollpasta wiki, a wiki that was made for creepypastas that were intentionally made to be bad. As you can imagine, this did not sit well with the creator. In fact, the creator was fucking livid. He posted a huge rant about it, and it comes off like the ramblings of a madman. As you can see, I am furious with the fact that my masterpiece, which has won the hearts of millions, has made a massive impact on the internet, is being brought down by a bunch of jealous, arrogant, retarded, furry haters! <laughs> but, that does not mean I'm just going to sit down and take this lightly. They've been messing with the bull, and now they've called out the horns! Listen everyone, I need your help with this. We are at war here! I want every side to EXE fan who is reading this to get the word out! Make more fan art, make more videos, blog the haters, pray side to EXE like you never have before, build websites dedicated to its greatness, whatever you gotta do to keep them alive and strong. Just do it! The haters need to bleed for their crimes! Rejoice, my fellow side to EXE fans! Our glorious little hell spawn shall have the last laugh yet! This will be his ultimate victory! The absolute subjugation. 
Yes, that was from the creator of Sonic.exe. One of the most well-known creepypastas, the creator wrote that. But we really had to give him credit for that line. Our glorious little hell spawn shall have the last laugh yet. Because in the end, he did get the last laugh. Sonic.exe is the only creepypasta left with any relevance and staying power. If I told everyone back at the peak of creepypastas that Sonic.exe would be the only one that was still popular in the future, no one would believe me. But it is. The amount of fan content for Sonic.exe still being made is insane. This cliche-filled gore fest of a game still has tons and tons of fan games, fan videos, animations, artwork coming out about it to this day. And they're not falling on deaf ears. They're still getting millions and millions of views. Look at the Markiplier vid on a new fan game based on Sonic.exe. Only a few months ago, millions of views. And kids know about it now too. There was a Friday Night Funkin' mod of Sonic the EXE that went viral and now kids are well aware of this creepypasta. No joke, this is the true story, let me tell you. I was babysitting my niece one day and she came up to me and told me she was having trouble sleeping and I asked why. She told me she saw a Sonic.exe video on her YouTube Kids app and it gave her nightmares. I have several questions on how that slipped through but it made me fully aware this fucking creepypasta is not going anywhere anytime soon if kids know about it now. Hell, some kids know about Sonic.exe more than other actual Sonic characters. Now what does that tell you? The impact this thing has had is unbelievable. Everywhere you look, a new fan game has been released, a new video with millions of views is released, a new high quality piece of art is released. <sighs> First solution. And not to mention, after the original fan game released, other .exe games came out. The fan game got an official sequel called Sala.exe, but after that, .exe games of other famous properties started popping up. Of course, there was Mario.exe, multiple Mario.exe's in fact, but then there was Pokemon.exe, Toy Story.exe, Aladdin.exe, Barney.exe, Snee.exe. Okay, I made that last one up. Any famous property that you could think of got an EXE game at some point. And people kept playing them and getting millions of views. And so people kept making them. Just looking at the result of .exe on Game Jolt gives you thousands of results. And a lot of these are probably even worse than the original fan game. Ah! Damn, that was fucking cheap. Huh? Uh, okay. Okay, I get it, I'm spooked. Okay, I get it! But... Damn, bitch, are you done yet?! No, go fuck yourself. How the hell is this possible? Out of every creepypasta, especially the superior ones, why is this one the one that gets to hog all the limelight years later? If it's due to the popularity of Sonic, I raise you this one. Suicide Mouse is based on Mickey Mouse, one of the most popular fictional media characters of all time. And yet, the amount of fan content Suicide Mouse gets pales in comparison to Sonic.exe. It does get a decent bit of fan content, but not nearly as much. So I don't think that's the reason. The reason I think that Sonic.exe gets so much fan content is the potential and exploitability. The idea of an edgy killer Sonic who uses his powers for evil and uses it to kill people is an idea that resonates with a lot of people. Even I'll admit, that's kind of a cool idea. Also, the idea of the game being self-aware and constantly glitching and breaking the fourth wall just to fuck with the player is also neat. And because of its potential and what fans have done with it, I think it's safe to say fans of the store who have made their own versions in fan games have surpassed both the story and the original fan game. The problem with the original fan game was it, it stuck too close to the script. It even followed the long pauses that the story was specific about for no reason to a T. The other fan games just let loose and got creative with it. Some even try to be, you know, actual games, with actual platforming and actual gameplay. Some even have multiple endings, when the original game was basically a 2D walking sim that played out the exact same every time, no matter what you did.
Some of these are legit impressive with what they've done with the concept. One, one of my favorite examples is what is known as Sonic.exe PC port. It plays itself off as an emulated version of the original Sonic game, but then of course the spooky shit starts happening. Okay, no, that was actually kind of freaky. But then, he starts fucking with your desktop, messing with the screen size and sending you text files. But d damn, this is really neat. Another one I like is Sonic.xyz. Now, this one technically isn't finished yet, but what I've seen is still pretty damn cool. This one also starts messing with your desktop, but it has more of an eldritch horror type deal to it, with all these weird creature designs within. I gotta admit, the sprite work here is fantastic. I want to see the full release of this at some point. So yeah, people have taken this cliché-riddled edgy story and turned it on its head. They made their own creative spins on it and made something actually worth a damn. That doesn't even account for the other fan projects like the animations or the mods or the tons of spin-offs. The next time you play something like Hotel Mario 6, you have the fans to thank for that. WHERE'S THAT FUCKING LOTION?! So after over a decade, it's the fans who have kept this creepypasta alive. Fans who are a lot more dedicated than most others. They have found plenty of ways to improve upon this story and add to it, and make it actually kind of creepy at points. The original did have potential, like I said. It just took a while for people to take advantage of that potential. That's why Sonic.exe gets to stay relevant. A dedicated fan base. A fan base who has actually fixed the story up and turned it into something good. That takes a lot of passion for a fan to do. And looking back at that unhinged rant where he asks his fans to make more fan art, more videos, more everything, they actually listened. And because they listened, they made better content than the creator did. And because of the quality of the content they've churned out, Sonic.exe has never left the horror limelight. And because of that, Sonic.exe is the only creepypasta character that people still talk about to this day. So, congratulations, creator of Sonic.exe. Your fans did exactly what you told them to do, and in the end, they've surpassed you. I don't know if you've ever seen this video, but you should be proud. Your creation has gone on to become a horror icon on the internet. Your old little hell spawn did get the last laugh in the end. He's dancing on the grave of other creepypasta icons as we speak. You can keep on smiling that shit-eating smile, Sonic, because it looks like you're here to stay. And stop staring at me with them big old eyes!